Welcome to round number three of the 2019 Go-Kart Championship Summer Series. Now today I must inform you that there's only three of us racing. As unfortunate, a couple of people pulled out at the last minute. So it's Jake, Tom C and myself. And even more annoyingly, the cameras both on Jake and myself both didn't record properly. So I've got a bit of footage at the end of this from myself, but most of it, 95% of it, is from Tom's camera. So, we're going to look to the flag, and as that drops, the first race of the day goes underway. That's Jake starting on pole position. Tom gets a mediocre start from second, and there we are down the inside in my Hyundai Mechanics overalls. I go up to second position. I saw them on eBay for about £20, and I thought, you know, they look quite cool. Yeah, I'll go back to the Williams suit next time. Nonetheless, I'm trying to put the pressure on Jake here and get past him. Since we've last come here, he's definitely improved his speed. Understandably, he isn't quite on the same level uh, right now as myself and Tom, because, of course, we've both got so much more karting experience than Jake. But, to be fair to him, he's, he's starting to understand the racing lines. He's doing the defensive lines through certain parts of the track, and it's really helping him out. It's making sure that he's not losing too much time there. And you can see here through the last couple of corners, he's keeping it tight enough through there that I can't get the overtake done. And I think testament to Jake's pace, Tom's not managing to stick onto the back of us right now. Uh, even though I'm looking one way or the next and trying to pressure Jake into a mistake, Tom isn't right on the bumper of my car, but he's caught up a bit through th this section as Jake went a bit wide. But as we've mentioned in the past, you can't overtake through that hatched segment. And then down the inside I go, Jake goes a little bit wide, and I get the overtake done up into the lead of this race. And of course, if we look at the, we sort of remember the championship standings for the summer series, it was very close between myself and John, but unfortunately John said very last minute he could not attend the championship round, which meant that it was really between myself and Tom for the summer series championship. Once again, it's only a little bit of fun. We all know that. It's not super serious. We're just trying to have a good time. Uh, but it's a nice little championship battle between us here, and it's nice to have that battle go down to the wire here today. Tom is putting the pressure on Jake, who I think has slightly slowed up in this second phase of this race. Because Tom is really getting off the throttle, so I'm not sure what happened here with Jake in the second part of this race. But, you know, you can see I pulled out a few seconds advantage at this point. So obviously I know that the pace was there, but also Jake's pace doesn't look as quick as it was in the early stages. So this is going on to the last lap of this race here. Is Tom going to get an overtake done on Jake here? I, I'd say it's probably a bit too late at this point here. He's not really been able to find an opening so far, so it's unlikely it's going to happen on this last lap of the race. But Jake does go wide there, which isn't too bad. As I go around the last couple of corners, take a check of flag. Tom's going to look one way, then the next try and get past Jake in the last corner of the last lap. That's a great overtake there from Tom, and somehow he's come back to get second on the podium after struggling to get past Jake for that whole race. So there we are, there's the round three race one result. I finish ahead of Tom C, and then Jake is in third position. So second race of the day. Thankfully, the guys at Brooklyn's are just so good at what they do. They just sort of, they understood what we wanted to do. They just kept mixing up the grid each time. So even had to ask for it this time. They they really just were on it. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Looking forward to coming back soon. So the flag drops and away we go. I'm starting a poll this time. Jake is in second. Tom is in third. This is going to be big for the championship. If I can get the victory here, that puts me quite clearly at the top of the championship and really in a good place going to the last couple of races here at Brooklyn's later on today. So Tom is starting to try and get this moved on on Jake straight away he knows he needs to do it he's trying to look down the inside there <laughs> you know there's a gap but it wasn't quite enough to get down the inside and up into second position tom needs to get a victory or two here today if he wants to to try and take the summer series championship so through the last uh, sorry through the first couple of corners on the lap here tom's making a few mistakes and you know jake in front isn't really doing too badly either to be honest the racing lines aren't 100 percent but if you look at where they were last time here at bayford uh brooklyn's i should say a slightly different track bayford's a little bit different in quite a few ways um but yeah if you look at the difference i think jake has done a lot better here. The, the actual like raw raw speed still a bit to improve on but the racing lines are definitely there he's not sliding about as much as he used to probably a jinx him and he's going to slide through these next couple of corners but nonetheless he's definitely doing better than he was in the early stages um, here when we were racing last year in 2018. So 
I am starting to pull out a margin here. I think Jake is being defensive, trying to make sure that Tom stays behind him. And in being defensive, it's slowing him up even more. So this battle for third position or second and third position here is really coming down to Jake doing a good job at defending and Tom really struggling to, to get past here. And whilst this is all going on, I'm at the front leading the way. Also, we should mention at the end of this sort of six race segment of the day, we're going to have a sort of time trial, a hot lapse in a really fast car. Like last time we were out here, we had some hot laps in a fast car, but they've got an even faster car they let us out in today. And that was really, really good fun. And uh, we'll show you that at the end of the day, or the end of the video, I should say, showing us who was quickest at the end of it. So, Tom... I think this is the last lap of the uh, race now. He's trying to get past Jake finally, but Jake is just doing a solid job here. I think Jake's definitely learned about, you know, just going a bit gung-ho into certain corners and just sort of getting sideways. That's That was what's slowing him up. Uh, but definitely now it was just a little bit more tidy. He was a bit wide there, nearly jinxed him as Tom nearly managed to get through on the inside, but he was a little bit hesitant trying to go for that move, meaning I win the race. And second position goes to Jake. Third place goes to Tom, meaning I'm sitting in a pretty good position now going into the last four races plus hot laps competition. And obviously I've got my fingers crossed. I want to try and claim the Summer Series Championship. It's been sort of the longest sort of off main season championship we've done. I mean, we'd have done quite a lot of races. I mean, 7, 14, I mean, technically would have classed the 16 sort of different races within themselves over these three rounds so a lot of racing has been done Tom starts on pole for this one gets a bit of a sluggish start but he's looking around one way than the next Jake's got a good one behind he's currently in P2 so this is good job here from Tom getting off and away straight away but as I was mentioning it's been a very long sort of off main championship season here and it's been really exciting we have got the winter championship to come as well as I had mentioned these are delayed videos these were recorded earlier on in the year and I do apologize for not getting these up as quickly as possible but the winter championship uh, won't be too much delayed as there was a big break from this last round we did at Brooklyn Tier um, to the winter championship which hasn't even taken place as I record this so very, very interesting to see what happens in those races. Obviously, I'm looking to try and win that Winter Championship as well, get the Grand Slam. Three championships within a year would be great. Uh, the reason why I should say we did a Summer Series this year is because, of course, a couple of people, uh, most notably uh, Tom L., who's obviously been my main championship contender for the last couple of years, um, was planning to sort of go away in the second part of this year, uh, meaning the main championship was all held in the first four months of the year. Uh, four, five, yeah, four or five months, yeah, I think it was even, yeah, we did all of those first rounds within uh, January to April, so it was all quite condensed, and then the summer championship was to sort of bridge the gap between um, the 2019 championship main series and the 2020 main championship main series, uh, just to get sort of active in the go-car and just continue lapping circuits, as, you know, that's what we all love to do, so... That's uh, it's good practice for all of us, even though Brooklyn's unfortunately looks like it's going to be closing down. I'm absolutely gutted about that because I'm a massive fan of this track. I understand that it's it's very different to somewhere like Lid or Bayford Meadows, but it's it's aimed at a different audience. It's aimed, I guess, at, um, at guys that just want to have a bit of fun and just enjoy their karting. And yeah, I'm very very gutted myself that it looks like this this circuit might be be closing down. It's obviously not got the sort of top end speeds that some of the other tracks we visit do but I yeah I'm just really really disappointed that it looks like this track might no longer be but you know I've got my fingers crossed there'll be some sort of solution but yeah go and support the guys at Brooklyn's I'll try to remember to leave a, a link in the description down below but if not just type in Brooklyn's go-karts into Instagram uh, and yeah just give them a bit of support whilst I've been speaking about that Tom's drove a great race managed to get First position in that one. I struggled to get past Jake in that one. Once again, I was just trying to be a bit cautious. I didn't want to just crash into Jake and try and get past him to, you know, just say I got past him. So, yeah, being a bit cautious, didn't want to die for an overtake. Good job from Jake. Solid drive and meant he kept his P2 in this one. So, we're going to the second half of the races today. 
of course, going back on board with Tom, and the track is reversed. So the, the lovely guys at Brooklyn's gave us a bit of a test session, gave us about five or six minutes lapping the circuit in reverse to get used to it. Now on board with Tom, race number four, Jake gets a decent start here, and uh, Tom sort of gets funneled off by Jake. <laughs> I don't think Jake did that purposely, but sort of Tom had nowhere to go. He sort of had to, uh, he had to sort of slam on the brakes a bit there, but. See a bit of a shake of the head there from Tom. He's had a sloppy opening section of this one. And I don't know what was going on there. But a double overtake from Tom. Right place, right time. I think I was trying to go I was trying to go on the outside of Jake, but then I saw he got a bit sideways and I obviously wanted to avoid the, any sort of contact. So I sort of backed off there to try and just let him go back down the inside. Uh, but unfortunately it did work out for me there. It was a, a great opportunistic overtake there from Tom. He, uh, he got past as I was sort of wondering about what's going on with Jake. But then, one lap later, basically, Tom leaves the door open and I go through into the lead of this one on the reverse grid race. So, let's see into this first sequence of corners. Can I carry enough speed through here? I get a little bit sideways that Tom is right behind here. He's putting the pressure on. You can see I'm looking one way than the next. Looks like I take a bit more speed through this corner. Get a bit sideways, though. The door's open on the inside. Is Tom going to be able to go through there? No, he's not. Wow, this is a nice little race here. It's nice to, I guess, have a little battle out on track because I know Jake was still getting used to this reverse circuit. I don't think he's ever driven it before, actually. So he was having to get used to it. But nonetheless, this battle out here for the lead of this one is nice and close, and it's good to see such a close battle. I'm um, getting a bit sideways out front. I think I was I was really, really pushing here because I, I knew Tom was right behind me, so I was just going for it. But maybe I was just pushing a little bit too hard in this instance because I uh, yeah seem to have been making a few mistakes. It's interesting to see it from this point of view actually seeing the amount of sideways moments I was making so through here once again the tight end twisty bit this is a corner or a sequence of corners this sort of long right and then this long left can be a place where you can gain a lot of time I was actually looking like I was taking a wide line through there on purpose I was wondering about that a lap ago. I was wondering if I was taking that wide line uh, because I was making a mistake. But I think that wide line is maybe trying to benefit my speed through the sort of long straight section which comes after it. So, yeah, that's an interesting uh, sort of thing I've noticed here. Do I do it again? I do go a little bit wide here, but a little bit more of a cutback this time. So, interesting. Very interesting. Nice to monitor my sort of car driving from another point of view, actually. But, um... Is that the, the finish flag? I think that was. It's hard to tell sometimes with the uh, the way the GoPros are angled, but that was the checker flag. I take the victory in a reverse, a reverse grid race. Apologies. Uh, second place was Tom. And third place was Jake. As I said already, Jake did struggle with pace in this first uh, reverse grid race, but I think the great thing about Jake in go-karting so far is he, he generally builds up to it. He doesn't just go crazy into all of the corners and just expect something to happen. He's uh, very methodical in his approach, and that's really helping him out to slowly get better over time rather than getting involved in lots of accidents. So race number five, we look to the checker flag to be dropped, and away we go. I start on pole position. Second place is Jake. Third place is Tom. I get slightly stuck on the inside here. I was wondering what was happening there. I think my cart got slightly bogged in to the fencing. It got slightly caught up there. I was like, what's going on here? Uh, but nonetheless, Tom gets past Jake and then up in to second place. It looks like uh, second place on the grid isn't really the best place to start by the look of it. It's not happening. And oh, Jake's gone through on the inside. It's a great little overtake there from Jake. Capitalising on Tom's little sideways moment. You, ho you heard the scream. Tom was saying no as he got overtaken there by Jake for second position. And Jake's actually keeping up with me here. He's really closing up here through this part of the track. Uh, Jake's maybe a little bit slow through this part here, but then through this corner, he's not doing too badly. A little bit wide. Then I go wide myself through here. I think I think I made contact with the outside wall there. I got stuck on the outside wall once again. Uh, I don't know. That's a silly mistake on my part. And I think Jake has gone through. Uh, yes, Jake has gone through into the lead of this race. So, wow. Crazy, crazy stuff here. So... I made a slight mistake, I think I went wide, and I think I was running along the, the barriers on the outside, which lost me a lot of time, and Jake just about managed to capitalise from it. Um, I also, once again, didn't want to go too crazy, I could have probably powered it across in front of him if I really, really wanted to, but I was just trying to not make any contact with anyone out there today, I was trying to just do some really clean racing and just try and do my best laps possible, and just, yeah, because I know a lot of the times around here at Brooklyn's, a lot of the... 
the overtakes come through a little bit of contact beforehand and I didn't want to didn't really want to involve myself in that too much here but now we're going to get to see some really good hot laps from Tom here because you can see Jake doesn't quite have the pace but it's a very tricky track to overtake on and I, I realized that and as I was mentioning just a few seconds ago I didn't want to get involved in just needless contact just for the, the sake of it to try and get the overtake done on Jake here you know if there was a clear and cut opportunity to get past Jake here I'd go through uh, but I wasn't going to be forcing the error in terms of pushing him out the way you can see I am trying to go in the outside one way to the next we are getting held up I, I, can, I know at this point that Jake's defending from me of course I'm going on the attack as well and all this movement is actually helping Tom catch up to the back of us here I uh, I think actually we're coming into the last lap of the race here. So it's interesting to see that Tom is really quick on this last lap of the race. He's really managed to catch up to the back of us. It, it wasn't that um, much of a gain over the last two laps or so. But this last lap of the race he really has gained. And you can see I'm trying to look. Last desperate attempts to get past here. Down the main straight trying to go side by side. But Jake wins at Brooklands. Great job from him considering he had a bad start. He was down to last place at one point there. But he didn't make any mistakes early on. And he won the race. Fair play. A small mistake on my part, going a little bit wide, I think slightly making contact with the barriers. Um, it's, sort of, it's weird, sometimes you get stuck against the barriers and you can't really move. I think it's just some weird thing going on with the, the car and the way that it's laid out. Um, obviously, the front part of the car is thinner than the rear, and I think it's something to do with that possibly, meaning that you get sort of stuck up against the wall a little bit sometimes if you make a silly error like that. So, last race of the day, before we go into the time trial, Decent enough start here from uh, Tom, and he's going to be leading into the first corner. So good job from him, but he's gone a little bit sideways, and he's made contact with the outside wall. He had to do a little bit of hard steering there, and it nearly cost him there. So Tom is just being trying to be sensible through here, but he's run really, really wide. Oh, no, what's going on there? Very similar to probably what happened to me in that fifth race. Of course, we couldn't really tell because of the, the onboard camera being quite far away, but... He just understeered very, very wide. Now, I think something interesting that the guys at Brooklyn's were mentioning afterwards, uh, I think something about go-karts means that when you go on full lock, it's not really technically full lock because it just sort of stops steering at a certain point here. So it's quite interesting to, to know that, actually. I didn't realise that, and that's probably... That probably highlights a lot of the, the reasoning for a couple of issues that a few of us have had in the past here, around here. Because, of course, there are quite a lot of tight corners, so you are going for those sort of motions. So it's interesting to know that a lot of those, or a few of those sort of issues could have come from actually just being too aggressive on the steering. So... I'm in the lead of this one now. I'm in a nice, comfortable position. I'm going to try to wrap up this victory. Um, Jake, I think maybe taking it a little bit more cautious in this last race of the day. He's got a race victory, which is nice. And I think it's also good to see here that Tom isn't trying to just push Jake out of the way. Uh, and it's, it's nice to see there's some nice, respectful racing between the two of them here. Even though, obviously, it is pretty apparent that Tom is getting slightly held up here by Jake. Saying that, I'm not pulling away massively, but I think Tom genuinely had some good pace here today. And it's obviously a little bit of gutting for him that he didn't manage to get a victory, a more victories earlier on. Because I think, you know, he had that one victory, but I honestly feel that he probably would have deserved at least another one here today. He had the pace to do it, but he just got very, very unlucky with uh, a few little errors here and there. And also just not being at the right place at the right time sometimes. So that's just the way it is sometimes, I guess. So we're coming in to the last couple of laps of this race here. Is Tom going to be able to make this overtake done on Jake? Maybe he could have squeezed down the over, sorry, down the inside there, and that might have been an opportunity. I'm not sure, but I think this could be the last lap of the race here. A little bit of contact on the inside wall there. You can see I'm not that far ahead there. I'm just a, a corner or two ahead. So I think genuinely Tom probably could have had the pace here to win this race if it uh, had all started off a little bit better for him. He hadn't understood why at that corner there where he did it once again. So we come around the last couple of corners here to finish off the Summer Championship in terms of races. I win second place goes to Jake and third place goes to Tom. And there we are, race six of this little sprint session at Brooklands. A lot of good fun. I always love coming here, as I've already mentioned in this video a number of times. 
but it's just a very very good track and uh, you know go and get down to this track if this video goes up in time i really hope it does but nonetheless there's the uh, overall standings for race number six of the day but it's time for the time trial so i got my gopro working by this point of the day so this is our out lap and we're in a very fast cart in comparison so you're probably lapping in the other carts about sort of 23 24 seconds and obviously on a short lap like this a second is a huge amount of time so we're starting our hot laps here you can see the time is going up at the top of your screen here they're hopefully identical and you can see at this first part of the lap very similar one way to the next unfortunately the field of view on my camera on the left hand side isn't the greatest meaning you don't get exactly the sense of speed you get from Tom's. Around the last corner, however, there's a clear advantage on the left-hand side of the screen. I crossed the line with a 99, whereas Tom crosses the line on a 27. So a few temps in hand there, and I felt like I did, did make the most of that cart there. I got used to it quite quickly, and I know there's still probably three, four, even half a second probably in there. Uh, three or four tenths, I should say, maybe half a second in there in terms of more lap time. But I was pretty happy with that. And the championship standings. After a long mini championship, that's how it looks. So the front three, the top three in the championship are the three that competed in every round. Makes sense. But still, you look at Jake's points there. Only ten points behind Tom, considering they did all of the same races. I think that's really, really good stuff there from Jake. A solid improvement. I'm obviously a little bit disappointed that John couldn't make this last round of the championship. I thought it was going to be a really close battle between myself and him for the trophy. And of course, bit gutting, he couldn't make it. Likewise, with my dad, I don't think he was quite close enough to be in championship contention. But nonetheless, he probably would have got a victory or two uh, here today. Then you've got Will and Liam, equal on 37 points. George on 29 after only doing the first round at Brooklands. Then Nathan and Tom at the bottom on 20. There we are. Really awesome stuff. I loved commentating over this. Hopefully you have enjoyed these karting videos. And of course, one more mini championship to come. The Winter Series. In a lot of ways, a nice way to round off the year. So we look forward to seeing you on that one on this channel in a couple of weeks time. As I said, as we're a little bit delayed, that video will be up quite soon. Hasn't taken part as I record this, but should be exciting. Thank you, and I'll see you all again soon. It's been Alex Mala here. Goodbye.